On a, on a very large scale, in numerous types of veg, vegetation types, environments, regions, we have observed invasion of grasslands by shrublands throughout a large area of the United States as well as other parts of the world. So when we are faced with lands that have been gone through this conversion, many times what we want to do is we want to restore them or repair them. We want to return them to being a properly functioning grassland. And we have an opportunity today to see uh, some land that has been treated through the Restore New Mexico program. And we will be able to visit uh, with Lane Hauser, who is a rangeland resource specialist with the BLM. He is the director of the Restore New Mexico projects in this region. On the right, this it, it, you can see the, the demarcation between the treated and the, the untreated. The green that you see is was actually treated last year. Through the Restore New Mexico initiative since 2005, on a statewide basis, we're over one, one and a half million acres of, of trying to convert from shrub invaded to more grass dominated site. In the Hornada Basin here, um, we've been treating in the Las Cruces District Office since 1981. Mm. And up until 2005, in the, in the Sierra County, we treated about 100,000 acres. Uh, since 2005, we're up to about 304,000 acres. Wow. We may have had a localized high intensity rainstorm event right in here. Yeah. It's not a very big watershed, but quite a bit of soil loss. There's a lot of soil loss. I mean, take a look at, take a look at this guy. So here we've got a creosote bush. This is where the, the base of the bush was. And so all of this root that you see here was in soil. And now it's been exposed because there's been this, this uh, pretty intense soil loss due to erosion. And, and you can see this on a lot of the plants around here where their roots are, are exposed. And I think this is just a great example of showing what happens when you lose your grass base. Lost a lot of the A and B horizon where a lot of the fertility is, but this treatment here is about three years old, so it's, it's still relatively new in regard to uh, the recovery period. But uh, this was treated with a half pound rate. Uh -huh. And to give you an idea, this, this bag here that I have is, is a bag of Spike 20P made by Dow. Only a half pound of this is active ingredient. Our district has uh, employed what we refer to as an ID team. That ID team is composed of a, the rangeland management specialist, a wildlife biologist, a hydrologist, we're just not spraying from fence line to fence line or from pasture boundary to pasture boundary. We're very precise in how we design these brush controls. You remove some of the shrubs. You don't remove all of the shrubs. You remove some of the shrubs. I think they usually are targeting to have about a 75% kill on creosote bush and tar bush. And then that, that concept is that that removal of that stressor will allow the grasses to come back. From our perspective at the Hornada Experimental Range, we're wanting to kind of test some of those state and transition model hypotheses. And we'll find um, 300 meter by 300 meter areas on the imagery that match up look, based on the vegetation state, what they look like. So the, just, just a pair of three, 300 meter by 300 meter um, box out there that has sort of this this patterning here that we see, these areas are exactly the same beforehand. Let's see how the one does throughout time, even though it's not sprayed, and how does the other do throughout time after the spray. And it's a way to, you know, scientifically say, okay, you know, it's not just because we've had good rain that we're having the grass response. Actually, the removal of the shrubs, you know, did allow the grasses to come back. The goal is not necessarily to restore um, restore a site to the way it was 150 years ago. Instead, to think of it as repairing those processes, 
and restoring that site so that it is functioning at, at the, the level that is appropriate for that site. And humans are a part of the landscape. So I, I feel it's important for us to always acknowledge that people are part of the landscape. We're not, we're not uh, observers from the outside. We live here just like the animals and the plants do. So that's my philosophy.